Oh. All right, good morning, welcome back. We're gonna keep going for um, actually our polar area today. Um, yeah. So we did the 2009 free response last time um, for one through three. We did one together and you did two and three for homework. So we're gonna do number four, which happens to be polar area. And then you've got five and six for homework. So objective mm -hmm. is just determine the area bounded by polar functions. So I'm gonna really quickly review everything we went through last time. Um, last time, the only new stuff we had was four different types of shapes. This is really just vocabulary. Um, mm -hmm. This is lemna skates, which look like skate tracks or figure eights. Um, limicons, which look like a bean. Um, roses and spirals. Um, if you have a rose, then each one of these loops is called the petal. Um, a rose is a type of flower in English, so a petal is a part of a flower. If your um, n number is odd, you'll end up with that number of petals, but if you um, have an even number for n, you'll end up with um, two times n number of petals. Um, so this one could potentially be um, something like r equals 2 sine 2 theta, if I had to guess, because my radius looks like I'm getting out to about 2-ish. Mm -hmm. um, and I've got four petals. So if this is an even number two, then I'll have twice that number for petals. Versus this one would be n equals three. Um, because we have three petals, and if you have an odd number, that is the number of petals. Okay, any questions on our shape stuff? No. Cool. Um, if we're talking about a limicon, um, a lot of times... Um, They'll ask you about either the inner loop or the outer loop um, when calculating area. Um, so that's really what they're referring to, this inside uh, part that you actually go over twice, um, or this outer part that you only cover once. Okay, um, last time you said if you want to take a sector area, um, you would have some angle over the whole part, which is 2 pi. Um, so if I made this whole thing a circle, um, then my area would be pi r squared, my fraction would be theta over 2 pi times pi r squared, which if your pi's cancel, if you're in radians, will end up as 1 half r squared theta. If we have a number of infinitely small circles, mm -hmm. and just keep stacking them on top of each other, um, then our area will end up being um, one half r squared d theta instead of just theta, so that's an infinitely small change in theta. Um, if we keep stacking those infinitely small radii for those circles together from a to b, then we'll get the exact area. Um, can you think of any uses for this? So, where would we, um, when would we try to find the area um, or arc length when all of our information is a distance to a target? and an angle. Mm -hmm. um, when can we use this? When? Yeah. Um, what type of situation in real life would you use a polar equation? So that's where you have a radius and an angle is the only information you have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think we can use for gravitation. Okay, um, what do you mean? Uh, find, um, like, orbiting, if we have orbiting um, um, planet, and then we can use Tepler second law, like, same polar area, same period. Okay, um, so thinking if this is the Earth and we've got like a satellite maybe, um, mm -hmm. then um, the only information you would need to use your polar area or arc length would be a radius and an angle um, from where you are right now. Mm -hmm. um, if you've got um, something like an air traffic control tower. 
Um, so if this is your runway, um, you've usually got this really large um, tower somewhere um, that tells the planes where to land. Um, the information that they're going to receive um, is usually just the distance to the object, so in this case the airplane, and then the angle that it is away from the tower. Um, and we can use that information to uh, figure out what the speed of the object is, so in this case the speed of the airplane. Um, and also the um, create a function for where the um, airplane is actually traveling um, would all be polar equations. Um, if I had like an x-ray machine, um, that x-ray machine is going to send out um, an emission that then bounces, reflects off other surfaces. Um, so you could do this with just a radius and an angle using polar equations um, to start mapping out two-dimensional areas um, for what your x-ray has run into. And then if you keep stacking those two-dimensional areas on top of each other, you'll get a three-dimensional shape. Mm -hmm. um, so there's several different uses for this. Um, if you want to track someone's position with a cell phone, you could potentially do that with polar equations. Okay, for our arc length, um, if I had some sort of infinitely small change in distance, so I'm going to call this dl over d theta, um, and I could say dl over d theta squared. is equal to dy over d theta squared plus dx over d theta squared. Um, if I wanted to solve for L, then we could integrate both sides. Um, mm -hmm. So that would give me my length is equal to, arc length is equal to the integral um, of the square root of dy over d theta squared plus dx over d theta squared um, from A to B. Um, which we could then solve for in polar form, um, ends up being r squared plus r prime squared, um, if I wanted to integrate in terms of theta. Okay, so we proved all of this last time, so I'm not going to go through it again, but um, any questions on arc length or polar area? No. <laughs> all right, there's all of our formulas one more time. Um, anytime we want to convert to rectangular for x or r, we can use um, our trigonometric relationships. So our cosine theta is x and our sine theta is y. Alright, so problem for today. Um, I've got this polar curve, r equals 1 minus 2 cosine theta for 0 to pi. Um, I want to let s be the region in the third quadrant that is bounded by the curve in the x-axis. So we've got our third quadrant here, one, one, two, three, four. Um, so here's my third quadrant area that is bounded by our function. Okay, how can I write my integral for this? So integration from zero to... Okay, we'll have to figure out where. Um, how can I figure out which angle I need to stop at? Mm, equals zero and then find the angle that passes through zero. Okay. So, so that is... Mm, cosine theta is one half. Mm, then it's pi over three. Okay, you're right. My first time would be pi thirds. So theta is pi over 3 for the first time. Pi over 3. Okay, um, so I'm going to keep going. I want my integral expression for the area s. So I can say s is equal to 1 half and then r squared. 1 minus 2 cosine theta squared. In terms yeah. of d theta. D theta. 
Awesome. Okay. Um, I don't think I posted the key this time, but I'm looking at it right now. So um, it's one point for limits and constant, one point for integrand, and we've got everything right. So one point limits and constant. Um, so that means if I was going to grade this, you would get one point for your constant, one half, and your limits, zero to pi thirds. Um, and you also get one point for the integrand which is everything else in the integral. 1 minus 2 cosine theta squared d theta. Okay, um, any questions on what we did? No. Cool. And let's keep going. Okay, I want to write expressions for dx over d theta and dy over d theta um, in terms of theta. So x is equal to r cosine theta and then y is equal to y sine r sine theta so if we plug in the numbers in for r that's and then distribute so that's gonna be one no cosine theta minus cosine theta square okay i think before we do that um, I'm going to do this. This is r equals 1 minus cosine theta. Um, I'm going to derive these. So oh, let's go. Two theta. Uh, oh, 1 minus 2 cosine theta. Okay, you're right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 1 minus 2 cosine theta. Okay, I'm going to derive all of these. And then we'll get the general forms. And then we can just substitute in the general forms. Um, so what is r prime in terms of theta? Uh, 2 sine theta. Okay. Um, what is dx over d theta? Minus r sine theta. Okay. Minus r sine theta. This is product rule. So, plus what? r cosine theta r prime cosine theta r prime cosine theta okay um, and then I would go and substitute these um, so that means uh, dx over d theta is minus r oh and then we just substitute right negative um, r radius 1 minus 2 cosine theta Mm -hmm. times sine theta um, plus r prime to sine theta um, times cosine theta okay um, and we'll see if anything cancels um, so in this case it does not so this when I distribute is negative 1 and positive 2 um, so this will be negative sine theta plus 2 cosine theta plus 2 cosine theta is plus 4 sine theta cosine theta dx over d theta okay um any questions on our first part nope okay then i'm going to do the same thing for our y so can you walk me through all of dy over d theta dy over d theta is that's mm, minus r minus no 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 not minus r cosine theta minus r prime no plus r prime sine theta wait yeah right. r prime sine theta okay. So positive r cosine theta plus r prime sine theta. Um, and we're going to substitute that in. <coughs> ah, excuse me. So dy over d theta is equal to um, 1 minus 2 cosine theta. 
um, times cosine theta plus our r prime to sine theta sine theta. Okay, if I simplify, what's going to happen? Mm. Cosine theta minus two cosine theta squared. Plus sine cos. Wait. Oh, yeah, sine squared. Plus two sine squared theta. The yeah, two sine squared, but cosine squared, sine squared is one. So okay. we can just erase. Um, so I could group this, right? So dy okay. over d theta yeah. then is equal to cosine theta. Um, Wait, we can not group oh. this. Hold on. We're not adding, are we? I'm subtracting here. Okay, we can't group this then. Never mind. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's as far as we can go. Okay. Um, so you've got dx over d theta and dy over d theta, and that should be good. Um, let me pull up my key on the other slide. Um, I can get that here. Okay. Um, uses our components, so we got that. So one point. Um, solves for dr over d theta is two sine theta. We got that, and then our answers. Um, okay, they didn't actually simplify this last one, but we got those. We better. Yeah, I think so yeah, too. Better. I like our answer better. Mm -hmm. All right, last one. Oop. Let's throw another slide on here. Um, write an equation in terms of x and y for the line that is tangent to the graph. Um, okay, this is causing me issues. I'm going to move this out of the way. Okay, write an equation in terms of x and y for the line tangent to the graph um, at the point where theta is pi over 2. So what do I so, have? So y was equal to r sine theta. <laughs> then we plug in 2 pi, pi over 2. And then get a value of y. Well, okay, let me take a step back. Um, what do we actually need in order to get a line that is tangent to the graph? There is a general formula. Yes, what's our general formula? Y minus fx, fx, no. Yeah, fx is equal to f prime x times x minus a. Okay, I'm going to call this FA then, um, mm -hmm. just to match what you did on the other side, is equal to F prime at A times what? X, X minus A. Okay, so that's my general form for a tangent line. Mm -hmm. um, and then this F prime would be dy over dx, right? Yes. So dy over the dx would be equal to what? Uh, ha, ha, ha. We have it in B. Uh, not yet, we don't. <laughs> hmm, uh, we can just divide it. Okay, we have dy over d theta and dx over d theta, but what do I have to do to them in order to get dy over dx? Oh, that's dx, dy, d over d theta divided by dx over d theta. Right. Okay, so now I can go back to b, like you were telling me. Um, and we are at the point theta equals pi over 2. Yeah, pi is pi over 2. Okay, so 
dx over d theta, I'm going to do dy, dy over d theta first. Um, I'm going to copy over. So I can say dy over dx is equal to. Um, so that was 1 minus 2 cosine theta, cosine theta. Mm -hmm. Um, and 4 sine theta, cosine theta, minus sine theta. Okay, um, what is the cosine at pi over 2? Cosine pi over 2, mm -hmm. zero. 0. And what's the sine at pi over 2? 1. So what is dy over dx? 0. Oh, wait. Okay, zero over one over yeah zero over some number. Uh, what number? Mm, one minus one. Okay, minus one, which is zero. Zero. Okay, so our slope is zero. So we can cancel out all the right part. Zero. Did we do this right? I did not do this right. We've got more to our d, dy over d theta, I think. Okay, I'm actually missing a term. Okay, that's my bad. Let me go back. I just didn't write this extra term here. Oh. Um. So this is 2 sine squared theta. Um plus 1 minus 2 cosine theta, cosine theta, mm -hmm. plus 1 minus 2 cosine theta, cosine theta. Okay, let's try it again. So on top, what's going to happen when I plug in pi over 2? One, two, two. Two. Okay, so the sine squared at pi halves um, is 1 squared times 2 is 2, and then the cosine <laughs> pi halves is 0. We'll cancel out. Um, over what happens on bottom? Minus 1. Minus 1, so that's negative 2 for my slope. Okay, um, then I need an x point um, and a y point. Um, so my x value was 1 minus 2 cosine theta times cosine theta. Y value mm -hmm. was 1 minus 2 cosine theta times sine theta. Um, so at pi over 2, what is x? Mm. At pi over 2? Mm -hmm. Uh, wait, I'm calculating. Zero. Zero. And why? One. One. Okay, so I've got x, y, and my slope. Um, so the last thing I need is just <coughs> to plug it into my tangent line formula, and we're done for the day. So what's, yep. our, ta what's our tangent line equation? y minus 1 is equal to minus 2 times x minus 0. Okay. Um, did they ask for... They did not. Um, if I wanted to move this to slope-intercept form, what would my equation be in slope-intercept form? <coughs> oh. Minus 2x plus 1. Okay, I don't think we needed that last step, but I'm going to include it just in case. Uh -huh. Um, okay, that was good. Yeah. Um, so we get... Let's see how we did. Um, okay, values for x and y, 0 and 1. Okay, we got that. Expression for dy over dx is dy over d theta over dx over d theta at theta use pi over 2 is negative 2. It looks good. And tangent line equation y equals 1 minus 2x. Uh, yes, that's the same. Alright. 
Awesome. Um, any questions on anything we did today? Nope. Okay. So once again, homework for today is going to be that FRQ number five and six. Thank you so much for coming, mm -hmm. and I will see you for physics tomorrow. <laughs> bye bye. Bye.